In 1870, we have the Franco-Prussian War, and we have Paul Cezanne actually going south uh, to the coast, to Lestoc, uh, with his girlfriend at the time, Marie Hortense Fiquet. Uh, as you can see, this is, is 20 years from, the, uh, from where we are and, and uh, giving away the future. This is Hortense Cezanne. Uh, she will eventually go on to become Mrs. Cezanne, but uh, they will, will be with each other for uh, a very long time before they are married. You hear a lot of different things about their relationship, uh, but uh, you know an important thing to remember is even though they might not have lived with each other all the time, they did stay married uh, with each other uh, from this point, or at least with each other's company from this point forward uh, in his life. So there must have been something there. Uh, so here we have uh, Lestoc, uh, and we also have uh, Provence, and we we start to see kind of how he's treating landscapes at the time or his interest in landscapes and uh, Lestock is somewhere we will return uh, later on in his his life he will continue to paint there at a later period uh, but again when we look at this uh, we can see how he's he's very much trying to uh, search and convey for something uh, within these landscapes and 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 again I, I think with Cezanne you always have to get this sensation that he's looking at something in, in this search kind of way finding what he can the the rhythms and flows uh, Jade, Jade de Buffon again this is his manor house and this is a nice little watercolor I wanted to uh, put this in if nothing else to show the variety of, of mediums that, that uh, he could actually work in we always look at his paintings uh, and again when we look at this it really does look like a a cube in the middle of the the composition if you will with the angle uh, being very much pointed towards us and we see the sunny side and the dark side of the house but uh, uh, even at this stage in my belief you can kind of see uh, Paul Cezanne starting to formulate how he views landscapes and, and uh, this idea of, of, of that, that, that he will formulate later uh, even here we can kind of see it formulating in, a, in another still life and we have the comparison from a previous still life uh, we can see how far it's advanced here and again uh, instead of looking at it straight forward uh, we are of course looking at it from the top down uh, and we have more of an aerial view and when we look at these objects especially the lemon in the foreground uh, we are kind of reminded that that he did come up with the idea of uh, treating the world as, as cylinders cones and spheres and, and uh, just taking everything for its basic geometric nature uh, diagnosing it and, and formulating those shapes in the composition of, of the painting so uh, uh, we have that there uh, in 1872, we have son, uh, their son, Paul, Paul Cezanne Jr., being born, uh, and we have kind of this rare image uh, where we can kind of peek into almost an emotional Cezanne, uh, if you will, with Hortense breastfeeding Paul. Uh, and again, when we look, he's still dealing with the idea of forms. He's, he's even taking the baby's head and making it into a sphere. But again, uh, this is uh, you know a very private moment that we have access to uh, by way of the artist. And again, uh, for the, the, the reputation he has of being this very unemotional person. We do occasionally see things like this uh, where we are reminded that he is, is, a, is a person as well. So after the war, he was pardoned uh, for, for uh, essentially being a draft dodger. Uh, he travels uh, back to Paris and then he goes to Auvers, uh, which is to the north of Paris, uh, and he begins to work again with Pizarro. And, you know, we really can't overstate uh, the importance of the work he does with Pizarro, uh, Camille Pizarro, the very famous impressionist, for several reasons. Uh, one, the lightening of the palette. As you notice, as we continue here, he's painting with colors, and the, the, the dark heaviness that we're so used to seeing is, is very much disappearing. Uh, in addition to that, he really starts to adopt more of, a, of an impressionist style of painting, if you will. Uh, we'll get back to that. Madame Cezanne Lee on a table 
Again, here we have Hortense. Uh, and, and again, uh, it, it, it's always been remarked that Cezanne, uh, Paul Cezanne, would take uh, just an incredibly long amount of time to do anything uh, in terms of art. Uh, most of his sittings would take 150 plus uh, actually sittings in order for him to complete a painting. So, uh, and the person would have to sit extraordinarily still. So the fact that we see Madame Cezanne uh, in so many of his compositions, uh, the fact that she was willing to subject herself to this, again, I think uh, uh, there has to be something there uh, in, in terms of patience. We return to Auvers uh, for the hanged man's house in Auvers, and again, this is just a little bit of the past darkness. You could have titled this landscape painting almost anything, but uh, we insert the hanged man's uh, as well. Uh, and, and again, as it says, it, it is shown in the first Impressionist exhibition of 1874. Now, back to what he's getting from Pizarro at this time. Uh, if we look at this and we think about this in comparison to uh, the portraits he did of Dominique, you can see the style has changed. He has a much smaller brush stroke. He's starting to build up layers uh, rather than just applying paint in these very, very large thick clumps like we were used to seeing before. Uh, a painter at work from 1875, not directly labeled Camille Pizarro, but I can only imagine that that would be uh, the artist uh, Camille Pizarro there. Uh, and again, we need to remember Cezanne does, has a, a horrible reputation of having a bad temper and just being this horrible human being to be around. And again, credit to Camille Pizarro for being able to look past all of that and see something inside of him and really being able to almost bring that out and foster it and, and develop uh, uh, Cezanne, at least through his friendship, into being an artist. And, and uh, again, I, I think that modern art uh, owes a lot to the credit of, of the friendship of Camille Pizarro. Here we have two self-portraits that are done at the time, and uh, it's a wonderful juxtaposition. On the left, we have the the, un, the, the, the savage man, if you will, and then on the right, uh, it's almost a man trying on a new suit in a mirror. Uh, and again, it, to me, this is almost symbolic of the transformation that that takes place with him, where, where he really does kind of go from being this savage, dark period type of painter, of painting things of like murders and, and uh, that type of thing, to, to really being more the person on the right, this more uh, uh, civilized person who's looking at uh, uh, what he's doing in, in a really serious and, and, and uh, uh, almost scientific sense. We also see from uh, 1875 and, and a little bit later from 1877 uh, some of the first bathers that he does. He's very renowned for the bathers at the end of his life, but this is another subject matter that he continues throughout, and it's kind of obvious that uh, he's probably not using a model uh, in any of these compositions, especially the one on the left. Uh, when we look at the woman's body uh, that's standing, it almost seems like it's two halves of a woman stuck together, uh, and her head is just kind of stuck on top of it. But um, that's not really what the, the, the painting is about. He's trying to find this fusion, uh, even at this point, uh, between the landscape and the figures. And again, we go to uh, Jardin de Buffon the family home, and, and we look at this in comparison to, uh, I, again, we, we're looking at a different artist at this time, uh, the, the brightness of the color and, and also the, uh, uh, the nature of the, of the landscape and how he's treating it. Uh, if we look at the tree on the left, we're starting to see uh, another thing he's very famous for, and that is uh, the positioning of how he puts his brush strokes that he does create uh, a sense of texture uh, and movement by just aligning them in a certain sense. And if we look at the tree, we get this sense that there's different degrees to the tree itself. Here we have a portrait of Victor Choquet. Uh, and we also have a portrait of Victor Choquet by, done by Renoir. 
uh, a year uh, earlier. And again, Victor Choquet was a person that was uh, friends with the Impressionists and obviously a financial supporter, uh, not only of Renoir, but also of Cezanne. Uh, he commissioned Cezanne to do a few portraits of him, uh, and some of them actually do appear, as it says in the Third Impressionist exhibition. Uh, that is in 1877. Cezanne shows in the first and third of the exhibitions and then he kind of distances uh, himself not only from the Impressionists but uh, from most groups in general uh, if you will but again if we look at this and how he's handling the portrait we can see uh, a different a very different style and approach to uh, individual figures the one on on the left I believe is very famous uh, for being in the third impressionist exhibition and uh, we hear uh, you know a, a critic saying that pregnant women should not behold this image for obvious reasons uh, and again when you when you think about stuff like this uh, the, the critics were brutally savage uh, to Cezanne uh, especially in the impressionist exhibitions and he didn't take any of it very well at all He's a person that, uh, again, just doesn't respond very well to things of this nature, and, and this probably pushed him even farther uh, away from the idea of, of living in Paris. Uh, Apples from 1878, this is a wonderful example of, of the work he's kind of doing at this time, and when we really examine this painting, we start to see what Cezanne is doing that is so incredibly uh, different, if you will. Uh, you notice that if you look at the, the, the brush strokes and how he's developing the apples, uh, he's doing them in parallel with each other, uh, kind of creating a plane of existence within the color itself. Uh, by doing this and, and by pushing the brush strokes in different directions, again, uh, it, it, it separates the, the objects themselves uh, from each other and also from the background. We'll notice that all of the background, it seems, is almost painted in one, one direction. Moving on to a portrait from Madame Cezanne uh, from 1878. Uh, and as it says, in 1878, we, we have the, the father actually does find out uh, about their their mar or their relationship, if you will, uh, and he also finds out about the son, and and you know some things never change, if you will. What happens is uh, he cuts off Cezanne's uh, Paul Cezanne's allowance at first, and uh, eventually he kind of comes to his senses and and wants to meet his grandchild, uh, and and also Hortense Cezanne, uh, and eventually they do get married uh, to each other. Again, when we look at this, we can see that. Cezanne, Paul Cezanne is really changing his style uh, and he's starting to really consider things of a compositional nature. Uh, again, we look at his still life and, and I, I think I've mentioned this. Uh, when you look at Cezanne's art, you look at a lot of the same things over and over and over again. He has a very thin amount of subject matter, but again, this is kind of the point. Uh, all of Cezanne's art is the examination of these objects as much as possible. So, uh, it, 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 we, we, again, that would be one of the reasons for the repetition. But when we look at this, when you look at the, the, the top of the, 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 uh, the fruit container and the water glass, we start to see a difference uh, in terms of perspective. Uh, and again, this is something that we will, we will see later. Here we return to another one of these bathing scenes, this time the four bathers. Uh, and again, if we look at the, the, the brush strokes that he's using to compose uh, the trees, uh, they're very similar to how he's composing the figures themselves. This to me is also Cezanne's kind of take on a classical painting or a, a, the classical idea that you would find uh, maybe from a salon painting, the idea of bathers or the classical nude, if you will. Uh, this is very much his take on that. And, and again, uh, it, it's important to remember he's not really looking at models. So this is him imagining this and, and constructing this purely from his mind. When we get to this outdoor painting and we look at this landscape, we're starting to see that he's starting to bring uh, together many of the, the, the different objects and ideas that we have. Uh, we have the houses as little flat planes or cubes off in the distance, and we can see from the trees 
uh, this this patterning of brush stroke that I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, when we look at this, we can also see he's starting to understand tonalities of colors and using them uh, in connection with each other. Uh, this beautiful landscape that he must have surrounded himself within.